you for doing videos with me. Because I'm grateful to have somebody to experience all of this craziness with. And you know, who doesn't love a woman that has been doing keto for 500 days and her husband starts not even halfway through? And I'm just trying very hard to, to stay ahead of him. It's not easy. Well, it's funny. I was at work and one of the ladies got to talking about diet. And she's like, so how'd you get into it? And I was like, well, honestly, my wife started keto and I was just decided I was going to try to be supportive and stop buying the things that were on her diet. And over the course of the first few months of doing that, I lost 25 pounds. And she looked at me and she's like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> sort of dog. Yep, that's pretty much what us women think about men who lose weight that quickly. It just doesn't really seem fair. Well, you know, they should be. They, they, this is the thing, though. People never take out of that story what they should. Is that I just cut out processed food and didn't try to lose any weight and I got healthier. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a hindrance when you eat all that processed crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's preserving you in the state that you're in right now, you know? Yep. Is that really the state that you would like to have preserved? It's just interesting, though, because I I feel like since I cut that out of my diet the majority of the time, now that when I do have that stuff, I have more issues with it. But yet, do I? You know? I know. I don't. I, yeah. Because, you know, it's like... It's like when I carry 80 pounds of salt to the pool. My joints hurt and my body aches and I'm like, wow, I used to carry this all the time. And no wonder I didn't have any energy to do anything. But then, like this week, I've had that boil issue from eating sugar and processed food. And I'm going, okay, this is kind of miserable and, and painful with each step. And is this better than carrying the 80 pounds and being able to eat whatever I want? And you know, sometimes it feels like a wash. Yes. You know, sometimes yes. some of the symptoms from, you know, just having gluten one day this week. I'm like, wow. But I don't realize that I felt like that all the time. Right. You didn't you know, have like the inflammation it was, a different was there bar. constantly. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, so... It seems more intense now because you spend so much time without the symptoms yep. that you don't really think about the fact that I was dealing with this every day. All the time, yeah. And it was just my life. Yeah. And I didn't realize it was another way. I thought, it was, you know, when you cope with something that happens every single day as opposed to something that happens once a week, yeah. it's, it's a very different feeling. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, that's, that's the main thing that when I actually started keto that made the decision for me is, you know, I was going through rehab from that accident and I had pain every day. Getting up out of bed was a difficult process. It's a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And now that's, it's only a process when I do something stupid, eat things I shouldn't. Otherwise, you know, like this morning, I woke up before my alarm, right eye, bushy tail, ready to get out of bed, didn't have any pain. And, you know, with what my body's been through, that's not supposed to happen. No. So. And I wish more doctors felt like they had the power to talk nutrition. And in the same regard, I wish more doctors knew oh, yeah. enough about nutrition and the effects that it can have on your body. Yep. Yep. And that way I feel like keto is so like ahead of the curve because you know doctors just don't teach you that the food that you're eating is inflaming your joints, you know? Well, you know, most of you you've gone to your doctor enough to know that he doesn't understand it. True. You know? Meet some of your doctors. And they're convinced that that this stuff is irreversible. There's nothing you can do about it. I can give you a pill for the rest of your life that will help you manage the your symptoms. Life. Yeah. That's it. You know, whether it's you know a diabetic issue or uh, uh, 
some other dietary issue. It's kind of like the whole gluten thing. Cholesterol pills. Yeah. Blood uh, pressure pills. Yeah. Anxiety pills. Yeah. And so on arthritis and so forth. Pills. Yeah. I mean, my sister has rheumatoid arthritis, and she is literally to the point now that it's a rarity that she has to take her medication for pain. And she used to have to take it before she Three could get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She would have one by her bed, and she would have to take one, and then just wait. Yeah. Hit the snooze and Until wait it for it to. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's life changing. I, yeah. And there's so many people I meet. Mean, they're like, "Well, I'm diabetic. I, I have to be really careful about my diet." And I'm going, "Yeah." But you should really be careful about your diet anyway, just because you love well, your body. <laughs> if you, well, if you get on the right diet, you wouldn't be dealing with that. You wouldn't have insulin spikes, so yeah. therefore you wouldn't be taking your your. Uh, insulin and then I mean if you live symptom free isn't that kind of the point? Exactly. As far as I know that's exactly the point. <laughs> you know? So Regularly. And I know I know it's difficult. I, I grew up with diabetic parents. Yeah. Uh, you know. And now looking at the food that they ate it's completely uh, clear. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all. I'm surprised you didn't get any diamond. You were on your way though. Yeah, I was. Get out. Yeah. Not to say that there are not diabetic situations that are hereditary and, and you know actually medically caused. And, and for those of you that she's clarifying the difference between environmental and, and biological, what you're going, but there is parents, but they weren't like parents. Yeah. Biologically, so. So, you so, don't know what's in your. No. Excuse me. Although your mother is a big yeah. ball of problems all by uh, herself. Yeah, uh, she, she has enough heart problems to scare the, the cheaters out of her. Yeah. Eating, especially as a 45 year old male eating the way that we need to to stop all of the possible health related illnesses that can come up is definitely a motivator well here's the fun part is anybody go look up a heart healthy diet you'll find a low fat diet yeah. and that's what made me fat and, and high cholesterol, which was putting me at higher risk for heart problems. Yeah. And I started getting warning signs that this is something I needed to work with. And then I go on a high fat diet and I feel a lot healthier. I've got more energy. Uh, cholesterol down, fat's down. My but cholesterol is totally up. If I went and told my doctor that this was the diet I was on, he'd probably flip. No, he would. Unless yeah. you're talking about a different doctor because our doctor knows about the diet that I'm on. And I understand that, but it's not considered a heart healthy diet. It's the exact opposite of what they're suggesting that I do. But here's the deal, and I know I've mentioned this before in my videos. There's something out there in the medical community because his response actually kind of surprised me mm -hmm. because he was very oh yeah i've heard about that i mean yeah these numbers are bad but you know technically they don't mean anything yeah and you know and so the, the knowledge is available yeah if doctors are the kind of doctors that are actually going to do research on newer stuff and continue their education exactly because they i mean you can tell i mean hi i'm losing weight my blood pressure is fine. My cholesterol number is high, but everything else is good. My triglycerides is fine. You know, everything that quote unquote makes it a worry is fine. Mm -hmm. Just the total cholesterol number. You know, and they made cholesterol out to be this demon 
but your body needs cholesterol it makes cholesterol yeah. hello like it's an important part of your system it's not a demon get the behind me cholesterol no that's ridiculous don't do that you need that it's important well, isn't it one of the things that helps with the oxygenation of the blood and the absorption of nutrients? And, and I think it, it, we need to learn more about it, but it, I think it helps it move things through. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it, your, it, it, your, your gut barrier. I thought it was one I thought of it the, was in your blood vessels. See? Let's look this up. We don't know, people. Ah. And I expected Robert to know these things because he's usually the one that knows these things. So it's really all his fault. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, oh, well, why I'm do you kind of that? behind on some of my biosciences. That's because you're too busy reading about politics. Well, that's true. But politics is so interesting right now. Gosh, don't even get absurd, people. Don't even get absurd. So interesting. On that note, before he takes over the show and it becomes a political commentary, film at 11. Robert will start his own channel about his political commentary, and you can listen to him drone on about all things politics on your own time. People want to hear, honey. They want to hear your take on everything. Well, it's very all interesting. I'm going to say. No, you're not. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, all no. All I'm going to say here is based on our political process, you're all friggin' crazy. Every one of you. Wow. Oh. Self included. I, okay. I, I got nothing on that. <laughs> Maybe you'll hear more about what that means later. Oh my gosh, I'm running all over the place. Sorry, people. All right. Robert's driving like crazy. Okay. Bye, all you crazies. Later.